I used C0 Nouvellette over one time in Spiral Abyss, and this is what I learned. Balls. Nouvellette is f***ing huge. He ruined the game for me. Twice. My girlfriend pulled for him on his debut while I respectfully declined so I could not so respectfully blow my load on Farina's banner. But then my girlfriend dumped me and took the kids in the divorce. Just like that, the love of my life was gone. I guess I miss my ex too. I had a taste of true power. I needed that blue chew. Which is a weird thing to juxtapose in the context of divorced children, but that entire bit was to say I pulled for him on my alt account. A quick bit on his well-knit kit. If you hold his normal attack, he takes a minute and- hmm. If he hits enemies with his skill, he gets balls. If he uses his burst, he gets more balls. If you hold his normal attack and balls are present, he grabs his balls and- <laughs> When he grabs Traveler's balls, he also- <laughs> That does not make Hydro Traveler a good unit for Nouvellette, or even a good unit in general. However, if your Traveler is feeling a bit small in comparison, they can grief Nouvellette by grabbing his balls. Let the mighty be humbled! Sometimes enemies can grab his balls, and he can have trouble- <laughs> But if you have a unit like Kazaha or Sucrose, but not Venti, they can grab Nouvellet's balls back. Upon grabbing balls, he's rejuvenated, but when dumping his spunk, he's literally drained of his life force. His first ascension passive turns his water gun into a hydro pump when you do moist reactions, and his fourth ascension passive turns that hydro pump into a hydro er pump when your HP stays relatively high. And finally, his passive talent increases underwater sprint speed by 15%, so he can chase down Archons faster and pressure wash their asses. And that's… kind of it. No fancy combos, sort of. No particularly complex animation cancelling, sort of. And not even rigid rotations, sort of. Addressing the sort ofs, the only combo you may consider learning for him is cranking up your mouse's DPI and ripping him like a Beyblade. This effectively turns his Lion AoE into a circle and has a non-zero possibility of nauseating you to the point where you get to enjoy your lunch a second time. As for animation cancelling, holding your left click fires his laser. Doing a short hold on your left click fires his laser faster. It's an incredibly small optimization, so don't feel like doing this is ever a necessity. And finally, his rotations are pretty flexible, allowing for consistent buffing, debuffing, and management for Sacrificial Jay's passive if that's the weapon you're using. But it's important to note that Nouvellette will grab balls with zero regards to their age. This means you may not want to use his burst and skill back to back, as there's a possibility he pulls the newer balls before the older ones. And depending on the rotation or the movements you have to make, the older balls may expire before you get the opportunity to consume them. On the topic of janky balls, when he goes to grab them, he'll only grab the ones roughly in a cone from the perspective of the player's camera. If they're off screen, you may not get your fast charge attack animation, and if you're not paying attention and doing the charge attack animation cancel, you might eat your balls and not get the payoff. That being said, his damage opportunities can be shifted around to easily adapt to any situation. Pure water can take on many forms. In general, his rotations are burst, team buff stuff, charge attack, skill, charge attack, more team buff stuff, charge attack, skill, then another power wash cycle if there are any stragglers left. His leveling priorities are easy enough, with normal attacks being the GOAT, then aiming to get him to level 90, as levels contribute a lot for HP scaling units. After that, his burst and his skill are about the same priority. Team compositions are fairly flexible. I've been enjoying him as a hyper carry with Farina, Kazaha, and Zhongli with the Archaic Petra set. You don't get full benefit from his first ascension passive since her only Hydro reactions are Swirl and Crystallize, but Farina's damage buffs and the team's Hydro resonance are so strong it doesn't really matter. It's very straightforward to play, has great synergy between Farina's fanfare stacks and Nouvellet's HP ping-ponging around, and most importantly, does enough damage to impress my parents so that maybe they'll love me again. The next team I found satisfyingly effective is Taser. What do you get when you cross an electric turret with a super soaker? A lawsuit. Very easy to play, pretty easy to double swirl, and very easy to flex. I lean towards Fischl because she's my favorite weirdo, Destiny has brought me hither, and Kazaha because he's my favorite Canadian. But other units like Yai, Beidou, and even Lisa can replace or complement her, and Kazaha can be replaced by someone like Sucrose, Venti, or a defensive unit like Zhongli. Protean out of 10 would zap again. Hyperbloom is another strong option, cuz… well, it's Hyperbloom. Nahida is the premium choice for Dendro here, but other off-field Dendro units can kind of get the job done. If you're using units with shorter off-field uptime, you might find it beneficial to bring two instead. As for the Electro slot, I've only tried Raiden and Kuki, but I can see Dory being a funny pick. Between Raiden and Kuki, I definitely find Raiden more comfortable despite the lack of healing. Raiden allows me to kite like a coward and keep my Hydro Dragon from becoming a Hydro Dragon roll at your local sushi bar, all without losing any damage since Raiden's elemental skill is centered around enemies, who should be sitting in the middle of a Dendro Core minefield. With Kuki, her Electro application is centered around your character, which means you gotta get all up in there to trigger your cores. With some enemies, it's okay. With others, not so much. Shielder is recommended. And on the topic of Bloom and Bloom adjacent, I made a Dia video, and 69 of you told me Dia and Nouvellet are great together. I didn't have Dia and Nouvellet on the same account at the time, but now that I do, I can confidently say Dia's not cope in this team. If your Dendro unit of choice is Nahida, you get some Hyperblooms, a few Burgeons, a bit of Burning, and you even get some Overloads and Forward Vapes, all while dancing on your enemies because you have insane resistance to interruption. For at least a little while. And on the topic of apes, he can do that too, in forward or reverse. Sometimes you don't get to fully control which. While I typically love Vaporize teams, this is actually not my favorite, though it does look pretty impressive. 
You can use Nuvolet to apply Hydro so Xiangling's Pyronado can reverse Vaporize, but Xiangling gains a lot from having Bennett. Nuvolet does not. And despite Nuvolet's constant stream of soggy stuff, he may not always apply Hydro fast enough to keep up with how frequently Xiangling's Pyronado can vape. That being said, you can try to do it in reverse and forward vape instead, using Xiangling to keep a Pyro Aura on and vaping on some of Nuvolet's charge attacks. This is also imperfect. Xiangling gains a lot from having Bennett. Even if her Pyronado isn't doing a significant portion of damage, she still needs it to enable new Baguette, so her ER requirements are quite high if Bennett is otherwise occupied. You can use units like Dia and Nahida to keep enemies burning and vape from there, and I found this to be easier in terms of stat investment and playstyle since you're no longer forced into close range to ensure Pyronado connects, with the added benefit of having Dia's resistance buff. But I found Swirling Hydra to be somewhat troublesome at times and more or less gave up, opting to use Kazaha or Venti just for their grouping instead. Skill issue aside, it is kind of funny to see the fat charge attacks power wash someone's colon. Finally, I tried Freeze. While this is comfortable against enemies that can be properly chilled, I wasn't particularly impressed with the damage. This is largely due to Risley and Charlotte being my only built cryo units on this account. Risley's off drinking tea, so Charlotte is the nice pick here, synergizing well with Farina. Unfortunately, giving her Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers doesn't really help with Nuvolet's girth, so her value in being a Catalyst user is somewhat diminished. That being said, once you group things and freeze them in place, they can't really do anything about it, and even though the damage isn't anything worth writing home about, the power trip you get is real. Speaking of power trips, I'm gonna trip over this segue. He's a straightforward unit in combat, but something important to note is his skill only generates balls when you hit an enemy, while his burst will generate them regardless. This is fairly obvious as stated in the game literature, but there are some things you can hit that don't actually give you balls, like the first wave of constructs summoned by the algorithm of semi transient Matrix of Overseer Network. Simon says get f nerd. Other than that, there are a couple of visual cues you can look out for to make your experience better. Or not. You can probably allocate your brain resources solely for critical bodily functions and still do a lot of damage. But in case you feel like keeping an eye out for it, you can actually see the termination point of Nuvolet's charge attack range, indicated by this blue arc on the ground. Above Nuvolet's head, you may see the indicator for his Ascension 1 passive pop up, showing how many levels of past draconic glories he holds. As a side note, the name of this passive gives me OK Grandpa Time for Bed vibes. And at max stacks, his butt flaps glow. Finally, when you hold his charge attack, you can see when it will be fully cooked, indicated by the circle. Then you can see when you're all out of steam, indicated by the circle. Considering you're likely going to be absorbing his source water droplets for an instant charge attack, you'll likely never notice the former outside of trying to scale mountains or float over bodies of water. And for quality of life stuff, he basically never needs a healer for your daily rituals. I often find my balls in abundance after a domain, and since no one's around to watch, you can just grab your balls for a quick pick-me-up so you can start your next round of disappointment rejuvenated and refreshed. For overworld things, it kind of feels like bringing a fire hose to a squirt gun fight, even if you don't want to bother doing a little bit of setup. But on the topic of his damage, it's pretty high. It's easy to get infatuated with how thick his numbers look and how easily he can cleave multiple enemies. His baseline damage is so good that sometimes, it kind of just feels like you're bringing other characters so you can stack up his ascension passive and do your VV shred. And while I keep singing praises for his output, uh. I do want to emphasize that I do not consider him to be a must-pull unit. If you already have well-invested on-field damage dealers on your account, you may not see him as a significant upgrade, or even an upgrade at all. But he is versatile, he is strong, and he is easy to play. With this in mind, I do personally find him pretty fun. The inputs may seem boring, but hitting <clears throat> on your enemies is a power move among power washers. If you've got the Prima jumps to spare and Nuvolet looks like your kind of guy, just grab life by the balls and pull. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might. Get Yeehaw and Lazarus to also work in this poem tonight. Poetry is hard. Next time I might try haiku. Wait, this is haiku.